Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, I see we've got a lot of people joining, um, but I think we'll get started since we've got a pretty tight agenda, pretty exciting, but tight agenda today. Um, so welcome to the 2024 National Native Seed Conference. We're really excited to have you here today. Um, over 900 people have registered. Um, I'm seeing about a third of those folks have joined already. So um, uh, we'll get started on our intro and our welcome statement, but um, hopefully we'll get some more folks uh, coming in over the next 15 minutes or so. Um, as I've been getting ready for this conference, I've been thinking a lot about communication and how essential it is to all of the work that we do. And we at IAE see this conference as a really great opportunity for connecting all of you uh, within the native seed supply chain. And we hope that you can find some connection over the next two days at this conference. Um, and so with that, I'd like to move on to a couple thank yous and announcements. First, I'd like to thank our program committee, Allison Agnare, Morgan Frankie, Stephanie Frischi, Aaron Gray, Sarah Culpa, and myself. So they helped put together the program that we'll be viewing over the next two days. I also would like to extend a huge thanks to our sponsors, without whom this conference wouldn't be possible, including the Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Uh, Forest Service, the Native Seed Group, and the National Wildlife Federation. Uh, each sponsor does have a virtual booth within the Whova platform if you'd like to visit their booth to find out more about them. So we have a very full day today, uh, beginning with the Secretary of the Interior, Deb Holland, and the Bureau of Land Management Director, Tracy Stone Manning, followed by our keynote speaker, Jennifer Jewell. And then we'll go into native seed production presentations for the rest of the day with a couple of breaks in between. And I'd like to bring your attention to a few um, things you can check out during the breaks. On the left side of the menu of the Whova platform, you'll find a photos tab where you can upload and view photos. You can like your favorites as well as add, you know, funny captions to the photos if you like. Um, and the photo with the most likes will win a prize as well as the best caption or the funniest caption. You can also visit the community boards where you'll find discussion topics. Um, feel free to start your own discussion or join others that have already been started. There's also a board where you can ask organizers anything. And so if you have questions of us, um, we'll be monitoring that board throughout the conference. Um, you can ask speakers uh, questions in their Whova agenda session, and you can access those through the agenda or through the resources uh, tab that's on, their, on the left side menu as well. Um, and then we're, we will be opening a survey today at 1 p.m. to gather feedback. It might be too early to really fill it out this afternoon, but um, take a look at the questions so you can think about those throughout the conference, because um, we'd love to get some feedback from you all. And before I turn it over to Tom, I'm really excited to announce that we have begun planning the 2025 National Native Seed Conference, uh, which will be held the last week in February in Tucson, Arizona. So stay tuned for more info on that later this spring. And now I will hand it off to you, Tom. Oh, and you're still on mute, Tom. Off to a good start. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tom Kay. I'm the executive director of the Institute for Applied Ecology, and we're very, very pleased to uh, host you all this morning. So great to see you all joining. Um, the quick update here on the Native Seed Network website. Uh, this is a, a structure we have online that allows uh, growers of seeds and users of seeds to find each other. And uh, we've created a, a marketplace that was established uh, almost two decades ago now, but the website has really fallen off in its functionality over the last few years. Uh, but we are now reinvigorating that with funding from the U.S. Fish and Wild, or sorry, U.S. Forest Service, excuse me. And we're hoping to get a, uh, some funding from the Bureau of Land Management to support this uh, relaunch 
that uh, creates so much functionality for our uh, industry. Uh, it's a marketplace for connecting seed producers and growers. Uh, we have a bunch of resources on pages to, to help people with uh, seed uh, planning tools and seed implementation tools, climate change uh, uh, responses, et cetera. Uh, and one of the really important things happening in our industry now is the emergence of grassroots seed partnerships uh, all over the world, really. And we are excited to be able to host uh, individual seed partnerships information and allow us to interact and communicate because there are so many different ways to form a partnership, uh, govern a partnership, raise funding, etc. Uh, so the structures vary quite a lot uh, from from partnership to partnership. So we, we want partnerships to be able to learn from one another. Um, and uh, if you would like to uh, get more involved in the relaunch of this and, and some parts of it, please visit the community boards in Whova. You can add your contact information to the Native Seed Network community board and the Regional Seed Partnerships community board. So thank you, please, please do get involved. Uh, next slide. There we go. Uh, I did want to point out that this conference is, uh, although it's virtual, it is the largest national native seed conference we have ever held in terms of the number of people. We have over 900 attendees. So a big round of, of applause for all of you for getting involved. Uh, we come from every state in the United States, all 50 states and uh, all but two Canadian provinces, uh, and uh, then in total, eight countries across the world. So um, this is quite a representation. I'm, I'm really uh, pleased to see all of you here. Next slide. Um, so uh, we do want to recognize that we're, we're on native land, wherever we are. And I'm going to read a land acknowledgement. The land on which we are all we all work and conduct habitat restoration is the ancestral and continued home of indigenous peoples. We acknowledge the violence that led to their displacement and recognize that there is much work to be done to rectify our relationships and to prevent future harms. Especially during our time together, we honor and value the long chain of knowledge acquired by native peoples honed throughout time relationships and experiences living with the land. We appreciate and respect indigenous knowledge holders, recognizing that this way of seeing the world can help us develop new eyes upon the land that we now share. I ask all of you today to consider where you are in this context. Who were and are the native peoples that lived and live on land you inhabit and work? If you're unfamiliar with this, we ask you to find and learn about the traditional ecological knowledge where you live. And that said, we recognize that many things are asked of our indigenous colleagues, and this is not their burden to bear. They don't need to teach us, we need to learn. If you choose this quest and want to become more fully educated about where you live, be open and patient with yourself. This is not equal to a Google search, nor is it your knowledge to own or share. It will take time and reflection to understand, but we hope it will help you develop enriched relationships with Native colleagues. I also ask you to help uplift Native communities and think about how you can contribute to the power, wealth, and health of Native peoples. Please consider making a donation today during the conference to groups that support Indigenous people. We've started a list of a few sites for donations to the work of Native peoples in the areas where IAE works, and we're asking for those of you with knowledge to help us add to this list. In particular, we're looking for two things, to help bridge the gap between our desire to connect and to prevent future harms. Uh, find places and share places like these that represent the work of Indigenous peoples and where donations could be used and links to places or books where accurate and respectful knowledge about specific tribes and particularly traditional ecological knowledge is, is located. So please share and please look at what each other put out there. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Um, and just to note that you can add information about um, indigenous uh, organizations in your area on the community boards. There is a board um, 
available for that. Um, and before we dive into our program, I just wanted to highlight a few housekeeping items to help everything go smoothly today and tomorrow. So we will be using Zoom webinar, as you've uh, probably noticed, to host the presentations. Um, there is a chat function and a Q&A function within Zoom. Uh, we ask that you please use the Zoom chat for comments related to speaker presentations or topics or um, to chat amongst yourselves. Um, and then please use the Zoom Q&A box for all questions to the speaker, which is right next to the uh, chat box on the menu bar. So only questions that are entered into the Zoom Q&A will be asked. If you like a question and are also interested in the answer, you can press the thumbs up sign next to it and it will move up the list. And then un unanswered questions will be posted in the Q&A section that's in the Whova uh, agenda session for each specific presentation. And questions uh, there may be answered by the speaker if they um, would like to answer those. And then if you're on the mobile app, uh, just a few tips, uh, turn your phone horizontally for full screen mode, and then please don't use the chat or Q&A in the Whova mobile app um, so that all of that will take place on Zoom. And just to kind of give you a sense of uh, where some of these pieces are that we've mentioned today, um, this menu on the left side will help you navigate throughout the conference. Uh, there's a, the agenda is up here at the top and you can um, visit speaker profiles and then the session, um, each session with their description. You can ask questions there. You can answer polls that a presenter may have put together. You can view all of the attendees, search for and find attendees to connect with. Uh, the community tab will take you to those community boards where you'll find the organizer announcements and our ask anything uh, board as well as other discussion topics that um, you all create. Um, there's photos here as well um, where you can uh, like and view people's photos. Um, the sponsors tabs will take you to the sponsor booth and then the resources um, tab will actually give you some shortcuts to the survey, the session Q&A, and some Whova guides um, once we make the survey live, that is. Um, and then uh, just to show you what it looks like within a, a session, um, so you go to the agenda sessions and then the Q&A will be over here if you want to ask questions or this is where questions will be copied and pasted from the Q&A box that, didn't, that we didn't have time to answer. And um, gosh, I think that is it. So I'm going to hand it over back to Tom uh, and we're going to get started on our program today. Great. Thanks very much, Alexis. And it is my great pleasure to uh, present to you our opening remarks from Secretary of Interior Deb Holland and Director of the Bureau of Land Management Tracy Stone Manning. I'll introduce uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Stone Manning right now, and uh, she will introduce uh, the secretary. So Tracy Stone Manning it has spent her career devoted to public service and conservation, bringing people together to solve the biggest challenges facing our lands and waters. Before coming to the Bureau of Land Management, Ms. Stone Manning served as both a senior advisor for conservation policy and associate vice president of public lands at the National Wildlife Federation. And before that, she served as former Montana Governor Steve Bullock's Chief of Staff, where she helped broker bipartisan legislation, including delivering health care to nearly 100,000 Montanans by expanding Medicaid and passing a water compact with the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes. She also helped launch the state's first Office of Outdoor Recreation. Ms. Stone Manning worked as the director of Montana's Department of Environmental Quality, overseeing the state's water, air, mining, and remediation programs. She served as a senior advisor and regional director to Senator John Tester during his first term, where she worked primarily on natural resource issues. She's an avid backpacker, hunter, and singer, and holds a master's degree in environmental studies from the University of Montana and a BA from the University of Maryland. Please welcome the director of the Bureau of Land Management, Tracy Stone Manning. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for inviting us to share this time with you. I'm excited to be here with Secretary Holland to talk to you about the Department of Interior's Native Seed Initiative, as well as BLM's integral role in it. It's a testament to how important native seed restoration is to our public lands that Secretary Holland jumped at the opportunity to speak with you all today. 
Now more than ever, we need to prioritize the protection, restoration, and connection of native plant communities all across North America. At a time when ecosystems are under enormous pressure from climate change and its attending stressors, native plants offer us a way to improve the resiliency and sustainability of the lands in our care and the native wildlife they support. Thanks to Secretary Holland's strong support, we've taken an enormous step forward in our native seed strategy and our ability to implement it. The bipartisan infrastructure law allocates $200 million to implement the national seed strategy and lay the foundation and funding for the research, development, and partnerships that are needed to meet the demand of restoring thriving native plant communities. More than perhaps any leader in this administration, Secretary Holland has been an unwavering voice for managing our public lands for their health, partnering with, their, with tribes, federal and state governments, academic institutions, and a whole host of other stakeholders. She has a deep connection to our public lands and a vast understanding of their importance to all Americans. I am so grateful to work alongside her. Her visionary approach to our work and mission is extraordinary. That I'd like to pass the mic to our Secretary of the Interior, Deb Holland, to talk more about our restoration and resilience framework and our Keystone initiatives. Madam Secretary. Thank you so much, Tracy, for that very kind introduction and for your visionary leadership at the Bureau of Land Management. I'm honored to serve alongside you and so happy to be with you today. Thank you, Alexis, and thank you, Tom, for the land acknowledgement. Hello, everyone. I'm thrilled to join you for the National Native Seed Conference and to celebrate the partnerships across the Bureau of Land Management, the U.S. Forest Service, the Institute for Applied Ecology, and the talented experts this, con this conference convenes. I'm always amazed at the size and passion this community brings to the conservation table. Across our nation and around the world, land managers, restoration experts, and environmental professionals show up every day to deliver for our planet and the ecosystems that keep us alive. Our country owes you a debt of gratitude for your service to our planet. But this work is far from easy, as everyone knows, right? Every day our jobs bring us closer to the existential threats our communities, our precious ecosystems, and our planet face. A climate crisis that grows more fearsome with each hot record-breaking year, habitat loss that jeopardizes the stability and viability of ecosystems we can't survive without, and the disappearance of wildlife that leaves us questioning whether our children or their children will grow up in a world that resembles the one we're fighting to protect now. It's this shared reality of ours that keeps me up at night, but it's the folks in this room and the historic progress made possible by President Biden's Investing in America agenda that give me hope for future generations. At Interior, we are leveraging an extraordinary $2 billion in funding from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the Inflation Reduction Act to advance collaborative community-led ecosystem restoration across our country. That agenda is putting resources where they can make the largest difference to guide them, we launched our restoration and resilience framework last year. What I love is that the framework serves as a roadmap of where we can make the greatest difference. Many of the points on that roadmap came directly from the communities many of you serve. By grounding specific keystone initiatives with landscape level significance, the framework will supercharge our efforts to foster biodiversity and restore the habitats that mean so much to us. The scope of these Keystone initiatives leaves no region unimpacted as we act on how best to restore the lands, waters, and wildlife that serve each of us. Across Alaska's Arctic, Yukon, Kuskokwim region, once thriving salmon runs now experience devastating crashes that place the future of Alaska Native communities and the diverse cultures they steward in certain danger. Now through our Gravel to Gravel Keystone Initiative, interior officials work in partnership with local communities to infuse long needed federal funding and more importantly, indigenous knowledge into the restoration of this essential ecosystem. The American bison, once numbered 60 million in North 
America with the population anchored in what is now the central United States, though by 1889 only a few hundred wild bison remained, nearly driven to extinction through uncontrolled hunting and a U.S. policy of eradication tied to intentional harm against Native American tribes. Today, thanks to diligent conservation efforts, these numbers are rebounding, but more work is needed. Our Grassland Keystone Initiative brings the protection of this ecosystem in partnership with the indigenous communities who know it best to the forefront of our country's conservation efforts. Expansive restoration progress is also taking place across habitat iconic to the American West, the sagebrush steppe ecosystem. In the last 20 years, half of this area has been lost due to climate change and habitat destruction. Our Sagebrush Keystone Initiative combines community-led conservation with federal partnership to defend and grow the core for future generations to inherit and steward. Undoubtedly, our Keystone Initiatives will be transformational for the health of our shared ecosystems and the unique challenges they face but they each share a common link. Our ecosystem restoration efforts will only be as successful as our country's reliable, healthy, and abundant supply of native seeds. This group knows better than most the challenges our country's native seed supply faces. Threats like invasive species, a warming planet, extreme drought, and destructive wildland fires endanger native seed supplies and make restoration efforts all the more complex, just as we need them most. And as our country's restoration efforts grow, our existing supply of native locally adapted seeds becomes strained. This reality is something that experts around the world and in this community have sounded the alarm on. Undeniably, a reliable, abundant, and diverse supply of native seeds isn't just nice to have. It's absolutely foundational to ensuring that the ecosystems we all cherish and the success of our Keystone initiatives across the country can thrive for our planet and for future generations long after all of us are gone. And that is why today we are announcing the launch of our sixth Keystone initiative, the deployment of the National Seed Strategy. With $18 million in funding made possible by President Biden's Investing in America agenda, we can put decades of this community's ideas and ambitions into concrete, durable action. Finally, we can have the right seeds at the right time in the right places nationwide, from the riparian ecosystems that support Alaska salmon populations to the tall grass prairies that support bison and countless other species. Already over $20 million has been distributed to our department's bureaus for native seed projects that are happening on the ground right now. For example, across some of our country's most visited national parks, from Grand Teton to Yellowstone to Glacier, interior staff collaborate to protect and restore populations of threatened white bark pine. As a highly resilient and tenacious keystone species, white bark pine dominates the high mountain ranges that make these places so awe-inspiring. But its health intertwined with that of other species like grizzly bears and the Clark's nutcracker bird face ex existential threats from the climate crisis and diseases like white bark pine blister, which is a dead fungus that is quickly de decimating populations across western forests. Together with the U.S. Forest Service and on-the-ground partners, the National Park Service is leading historic restoration work of white bark pine watersheds through thoughtful seed management and tree planting efforts. Much of our native seed efforts are happening in partnership with Indian tribes who use indigenous knowledge to steward this nation's landscapes informed over millennia of observation and living in tune with the natural world. At Sand Creek Massacre National Historic Site in Colorado, the National Park Service works with the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes to convert 500 acres of degraded rangeland to short grass prairie and sage shrubland. 
and at the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes Reservation in Montana, funding from the President's Investing in America agenda supports the upgrade and expansion of the tribe's greenhouse facilities that will improve its ability to grow native seedlings for nationwide restoration efforts. Already, our native seed strategy is making positive waves across the country. It underpins how dependent each Keystone initiative is on the success of the native seed strategy. Our commitment to restore the ecosystems that support Alaska's most essential salmon runs, our mission to right the historic wrongs that the federal government perpetuated through the destruction of the bison and its prairie grassland ecosystem, and saving the growing, saving and growing the Western sagebrush step that so many of us want to pass down to future generations. Importantly, we're growing the infrastructure, policy, and staffing we'll need to get to work, get our work accomplished on the scale that this challenge demands. Guiding this progress is our National Seed Strategy Action Plan, which our talented colleagues across the department completed in December of last year. Key to its effective implementation and the first recommendation of the action plan is the creation of a national interagency seed and restoration center, which will function as a network and forum for coordinating every aspect of native seed development and research. I'm so proud to share that we are taking steps to implement the plan and our department owes a huge thanks to the Keystone Initiative team members who make this vision a reality. Without them, we wouldn't be meeting this moment at the scale scientists and experts like many of you have so clearly outlined for us. Let's take a moment to give them a virtual round of applause. <laughs> what I find so special about this work <laughs> is the inherent collaboration needed to reach our ambitious goals across seed collection, on the ground conservation core, agricultural producers and institutions from the most experienced forest experts to the conservationists stepping into the field for the first time. Above all, this collaboration doesn't happen without community. In 1999, the Mission Church of the Pueblo of Laguna in New Mexico, which is my tribe, celebrated its 300th year. 300. A group of us gathered to plan a year-long program of activities. As part of that program, we planned the Spirit Garden to be planted near the San Jose River on the south side of the village. Together, we installed a water pump, cleared a half acre of land, and through a local seed organization, planted, donated heirloom seeds of corn, squash, tobacco, and beans. That fall on Laguna's feast day in September, we harvested the vegetables for the Pueblo's dancers to enjoy. To many, the spirit garden may have seemed small, but to us, it brought us closer to the year, to the foods that fuel our Pueblo's culture, and to each other. It was a victory that wouldn't have happened without the collaboration of our community or without the volunteers and local seed network that made sure the spirit garden grew into something powerful and enduring. That's the kind of collaboration this community offers every single day. It's collaboration that doesn't stop when the challenge at hand seems insurmountable. But that doubles down because each of us knows exactly what's at stake. It's the kind of collaboration that keeps our teams at Interior inspired to lead this work alongside each of you. That keeps me honored to be your partner in this essential historic effort. And now I'm so thrilled to pass the mic over to my colleague and friend. Tracy's expertise and commitment to protecting our planet is bringing our bold ecosystem restoration vision to life, and we wouldn't be here today without her. Tracy, back over to you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. It is truly inspiring to hear your commitment uh, to this really vital issue. Um, friends, I want to build on the Secretary's update to emphasize the importance of native seeds to the Bureau of Land Management and share what we're doing here at BLM to conserve this irreplaceable part of our natural heritage, this irreplaceable part of our natural world. 
The BLM is a global leader when it comes to native seed development, collection, propagation, and use. As the largest land manager in the United States, we're responsible for 245 million acres. That's one in 10 acres in our country. We're the largest purchaser of native seeds in the Western hemisphere. That's both thrilling and concerning. Thrilling for the obvious reasons and concerning because we're the biggest and we aren't doing enough yet. As you've just heard from the secretary, we sure are working on that. We invest in our native seed program, not only because it's the right thing to do, but, but because we need native seeds to restore and protect landscapes in our care and the species that rely on them. Native plants represent the vital green infrastructure that wildlife rely on for healthy biodiverse habitat. And that's not all. Many native plants and especially their seeds also contain code from evolution, the genetic makeup we will all need especially in today's changing climate, to get our restoration activities right. Many native plants have unique advantages such as drought tolerance, pest resistance, and salt tolerance. This is especially true in arid and semi-arid climates on many of our BLM public lands. The loss of this genetic heritage would be catastrophic. For many years now, We've worked with our partners to increase the native seed supply through the National Seed Strategy for Restoration and Rehabilitation. The central goal of this strategy, of course, is to get the right seeds in the right places at the right time. Sounds simple, but as you all are sure aware, the, incredibly diverse, the, the incredible diversity of our landscapes, stakeholders and natural resources involved in this effort makes it no easy task. Our seed strategy encompasses hundreds of people across the Department of Interior and partner organizations. And so we're grateful for more than the 150 federal and state agencies, tribal organizations, NGOs, and private groups that provide funding and support for this really important program. This strategy includes using seed collection teams to gather native seeds on public lands nationwide, funding research on seed production and restoration techniques, conducting field trials of locally adaptive native seed and partnering with private growers to purchase native seed. Our BLM seed ware warehouse headquartered right here in Boise has purchased more than 54 million pounds of native and non-native seeds over the past 25 years. In high fire years, we can purchase as much as 7 million pounds of, of seeds or more. Each year, the number of seeds we request and purchase continues to increase. BLM restoration practitioners are botanists, ecologists, emergency stabilization and restoration professionals, and more, all use native seeds to restore resilient native ecosystems across our public lands. For example, we've contracted with the Chicago Botanic Garden for a five-year seed collection project in Southern California focusing on about 40 native species, including white bursage, burrow brush, desert willow, and big salt bush. This spring, botanists will again be chasing the spring seeding cycle for these important native plant species across two major ecoregions, the, uh, the Sonoran Basin and Range and the Southern California Mountains. The seeds they collect will be used to restore wildlife habitat for the desert pupfish, desert tortoise, peninsular bighorn sheep, and flat-tailed horned lizard. These seeds, genetically adapted to the conditions and stressors of the region, will also be used to restore areas burned by wildfire or damaged by unauthorized recreation or development. Further to the north in Oregon, the Medford BLM field office developed a native seed program that has led to the use of 100% genetically appropriate native seed for projects and fire recovery. Similarly, in the Rogue River Basin of Oregon, the Rogue Native Plant Partnership is working to meet the seed needs of the region. Currently, there are 32 signatories on the partnership's Memorandum of Understanding with representation from BLM, Fish and Wildlife Service, and Forest Service, along with a host of tribal, state, and private partner organizations. To date, the seed inventory generated through the partnership includes 112 species and over 200 collections. And of course, you all know collections just the start. We need to make sure we store and use the seeds in the most efficient and effective ways. 
We cannot afford to waste the resources and effort that goes into collecting seeds, only to see them degrade in our seed banks. In a collaboration between BLM and the Department of Ag's Agricultural Research Service, researchers are developing a new test that predicts longevity of stored seeds based on the speed that the RNA degrades. Using newly collected seeds, as well as seeds that have been stored since 2004, the results will allow the research service to predict how long a seed lot survives in storage, including distinguishing seeds that are dormant from those that have died. If successful, this new technology will maximize longevity of native seeds, minimize costs for maintenance, and ensure that seeds are always readily available for restoration. It's really exciting research. As you undoubtedly experience, farming native plants from wild land collected seed is challenging. Wild harvested seeds of genetically appropriate plants do not necessarily germinate, grow, and reproduce all at the same time for an easy harvest. Farmers must be willing to experiment, change harvesting practices to capture multiple harvest windows, obtain or modify equipment for harvesting and seed cleaning, and settle for small yields, especially during the first few years of working with a new species. We're working with the NRCS Plant Materials Center and other research institutes to develop genetically appropriate native plants that can be used at restoration sites or for commercial production. This step of producing and developing protocols for growing wild collected seed is critical in getting enough seed available for restoration. Our strategy does not uh, just focus on collecting and growing native seeds outside of existing habitats, but also on reinforcing seeds' ability to disperse and migrate naturally throughout their habitats. This focus emphasizes the importance of habitat connectivity across land, marine and freshwater ecosystems from our public lands in Florida to Washington state. These efforts align with our climate mitigation efforts as we work across federal, state and private lands to create migration corridors and enable native plants and, and animals to respond to shifting climate zones and conditions. The critical funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law the secretary just announced will help us continue to make a profound impact on our public lands across the country as we continue to work together on native seed conservation and production. We're optimistic that our efforts developing and conserving native seeds for future use and restoration will help us create the type of infrastructures and ecosystems we need to help our landscapes adapt to changing climate and other stressors but we need your continued help and support. This issue is bigger than all of us, and only by working together and ensuring our work complements each other's efforts will we be successful. I trust that you all know that BLM is a committed partner in this cause, and we look forward to the connections and partnerships we're gonna build and strengthen with you all today. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you for having the secretary uh, and me join you. Great. Thank you.